Retention. We have not talked about retention. It is one of my favorite subjects. When we think about growth in our studio, what are the three pillars that we focus on in growth? We focus on attraction and enrollment and yes, round of applause for you guys. It's not even on the screen. It is not even on the screen. Good job. Let's talk about student attraction. Retention. retention. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Let's talk about student retention because we've already done attraction. When it comes to student retention, it is one of the most valuable things that you can focus on inside of your studio. Why do you think it's important to focus on retention? Because it costs less to keep a student. Costs less to keep a student, 100%. What else? Yes. You can't grow unless you're retaining. No, you can't. Especially if you're one in, one out, one in, one out, one in, one out. Does anyone feel like that's their studio sometimes? Yeah, sometimes it feels like that. So we need to work really hard on keeping our students. It's actually never been harder to keep students because there are so many options out there. But when you put your attention on retention, do you like that little rhyme? You can really build an amazing business. And not only an amazing business, you can build a beautiful community inside of your studio. Is anybody freaking out about how many students are going to return to you in the fall? Is anyone like slightly nervous around this? Yeah, some of us, some of us might be. Uh, and so I want to combat a little bit of that. So let's talk about a little bit your retention rate. So what percentage of your students are re-enrolled for the new season? What percentage of your students are re-enrolled? Ideally, the re-enrollment process happens around April. What month are we in, friends? August. It starts with A, April, August, but we're a couple of months too late. But don't worry, there's hope. There is hope. Because here's what happens. Ideally, in April, you have a six-week re-enrollment process. I'm going to give you the abbreviated version of that today because we, we don't have that long and it's not April anymore. <laughs> Ideally, that's when we do re-registration re for fall, is when they're in it, they're a part of it, they're excited, and we want them to commit for the next season. Why do we want them to do that? Who's got some ideas? Why do we want them to re-register then? So, we know the so you know your numbers, you can do the schedule. Yes, so you can remarket to new students and know how much money to spend on it. Yes, I would love your time during now, August, September when you start to be focused on generating new student inquiries, not going, oh my goodness, no one's coming back, you know, and crying and all, all the rest of it. So I would rather you do that in April, get everyone back in so that now you can focus on filling up your classes. Because like I said, student attraction is like what oxygen is to us humans. We need it all the time. So think about that question. Is that answer scary for anyone when you've just done those numbers? You've just worked out the percentage of people that are coming back. Maybe it's zero. Maybe it's 20%. Maybe you're like, oh, I haven't re-registered. Like, re-register? They just like know to come back. Yeah, that's a bad plan, by the way. <laughs> that's a bad plan, but don't worry. We can fix it. So get that number in your mind. Let's really dive in and work it out. So who wants to do some math on a Sunday afternoon? Oh, doesn't this sound fun? After lunch, even more fun. Your currently re-enrolled students have that number. Divide it by the final student numbers you had from last season and times it by 100. This is going to give you your re-enrolled rate. Oh, sorry. Some of you are like, oh, I hear, oh. I'm going to give you an example of it, so... Here we go. Let's just go to the example. So let's say you have 150 re-enrolled students. You had 300 students last season. 
That is a 50% enrollment rate. You know I was really lazy on the math when I did this slide. Because <laughs> my math is not great and I didn't have my phone on me. 150 re-enrolled. You had 300 students last season. You're at a 50% re-enrollment rate. Have you worked that out? Yeah. Who said yes? Hands up if you said yes. What's your number? 50%. 50%. OK, we we're on the same page here. <laughs> Who else has their number? Yes, Katie. Uh, I think she's at probably at like 60 something percent. 61. Great, 61, yes. 65. 65. Did you put your hand up, Megan? No, yeah, okay. We were at 65. 65, great, yes. 70. 70, yes. 50% in a military town. 50% in a military town. Great job, yes. 47%. 47. Shauna. 77. Woo! 77. <laughs> Stephanie. 60%. Yes. 82. 82. Knocking it out of the park. This is great. So, guys, what I want you to focus on is for next April. I want to make sure that re-enrollment is a focus for you. Heather, this is from you before you move to all year round, which is a conversation we're going to have at our retreat. Um, but the first time Heather did this, she had 94% following the six-week re-enrollment process. I'm going to give you an abbreviated version for us to work on so that you can implement that in 21 days. I'm going to give you the 21-day version. How does that sound? Oh, wow, you must be so excited to get your current students re-enrolled in your studio. I am so, so happy. Let's get your students back to you. So when you have a re-enrollment process put in place, uh, this is not going to happen. Who knows who's going to come back? I don't know. And you rock up to that class where there's like nobody in it and you're like, oh, then you're like texting and frantically calling to try and fill the studio. Timeout temptations. What do I, this sounds like a chocolate, right? Timeout temptations. What happens if you don't re-register your students is that maybe during the summer break, they try other things. And because they haven't committed to you, Hopefully, well, not hopefully, because I want them to come back to you, but these business owners might be really clever. If they're going to other camps or other activities or other sports during summer, then they, while they're there, they commit to enrolling with them for the fall, right? They have been tempted by temptations and they have gone somewhere else because you haven't secured that enrollment back in April. And this is sad. The kids are cute, but this is sad. Uh, you might have to start all back over again. And that wouldn't be a good place to be. You work so hard for your students. Make sure that they are re-enrolling so that you keep them, so that you don't be on this wheel that constantly goes like this. And I mention this, but if you don't have a re-enrollment process, you're not going to have any time to work on getting new students. Right now is where you should be in the depths of really working out your marketing plan, getting ready for it to, to explode in your local community so that you are bringing in new students when you start up for your fall season. That's not going to happen. 21 day turn around. Sounds like a TV show. Okay, ready to do some work this afternoon? Yes, awesome. When does your season start? Put the date on your piece of paper. When does your season start? And then work back 21 days. If you're like, hey, clean, it starts tomorrow. Uh, listen and enjoy this session. I have no advice. Uh, I do have advice. Start calling people and making sure that they're turning up. That's what I would be doing. If you start this week or next week, I would be calling and texting everyone. I've actually got a a great email template or a text template that I'm going to give you in this session that you can do that. Re-enrollment incentive list. Uh, I'm a fan of offering, although I hate discounting, I am a fan of offering incentives for people to re-enroll. It's a great way for people to take action, to get them motivated to take that action in a certain period of time. The first one, if you have a registration fee, or something similar, you might give them a percentage off. 50% is an example, it might be 10%, might be 5%, whatever's gonna work with you, but some type of incentive, you can call it early bird pricing, so that if they take action and re-register with you, 
that they can get a uh, discount on that registration fee. Number two is they can lock in 2019 pricing if they register early. And all that means is the pricing that they had last season, they get the same pricing this year. Not forever, just for the year. And then any new people that sign up with you, they get 2020 pricing. You might want to do that. This one generally works pretty good. An exclusive workshop or a camp or a welcome back to dance party. Hey, if you register in the next 48 hours, 72 hours, you'll get a free ticket to this workshop. We're charging everyone else $50 a ticket to come to. Make sure you're working out your costs when you offer these things. Pro recital tickets for 2020. We talked about this. This is another kind of bargaining chip that you can utilize as well, where you give them the opportunity to re-register and re-enroll, and then they get to go on this priority list where they might get access a week before recital tickets happen. Uh, they get to jump on and buy their recital tickets. Number five is a percentage of dancewear during the year. Again, make sure you know your margins on this. Priority customer service. I mentioned this a little bit when we were talking about VIP packages yesterday. This is something that costs you zero, nothing, uh, but it's a great perk for your customers to have. A VIP party when the season goes back. Maybe you want to have a party, bring in some food. Uh, use those strategic partnerships we talked about yesterday for them to sponsor your events, your back to dance party so they can supply cupcakes, adult beverages, not for the children, for the parents. A season starter kit is another idea. So you could work with your uh, uniform, your costume supplier, put a little pack together that might have a little $5 tutu in it and something else and a pair of stockings and a tiara. The boys can have a t-shirt and a pirate cap or something. Um, but a starter kit is, is really effective as well. So there's a couple of incentives that you can use. Work out which one is best for you. Also work out which one is going to be most exciting to your customers. Not you, your customers. I think we know by now after our three days together, one of the themes that has continued over our three days is all about listening to your customer. Listen to your customer. Ask them. You could even go out and do a poll and say, hey guys, we're running an awesome Back to Dance re-registration campaign. We're gonna give everyone who re-registers next Monday between the hours of nine to 10 a gift. Which gift would you love? List out those 10 or eight that I just gave you and see which one gets the most votes. You're building buzz around a campaign that you're just about to execute. So you kind of get to double dip there. Does that make sense? Great. Let's look at your 21 day back to dance. So we get three weeks. We only get three weeks to get these people back into our studio and re-registered. So the first thing is make sure you finalize your schedules. Has everyone finalized their schedules? Yes. yes. Some people are laughing. I'm guessing that's a no. You did it yesterday, so you're a yes. You're still a late, you're still a yes, it's okay. Finalize your schedules. Second, create a master sheet with all of your students and their classes that they've done, along with options for them to take. What do I mean by this? There's a huge opportunity right in front of you. You have students currently doing one, two, three, four classes a week. They could probably be doing more classes at your studio, correct? Yes. yes. Do you tell them about these classes during your re-enrollment process? Great, but do you highlight them, the ones that they should be doing along with a recommendation of why they should be doing those classes? Great, I think I had one or two people say yes. So that's what we need to be doing because you would think they come to recital, they sit there for eight hours and watch your recital. You would think that they know everything that you do. People often say to me, but Clint, like they know what we do. I don't need to keep telling them about it. Well, no, they only know that their daughter goes to ballet at 4 p.m. on a Tuesday. They don't know there's a jazz class beforehand that they could do. They don't know that there's a tap class that they could do. 
They don't know there's a clogging class after that they could do at Megan's studio, right? And so we need to think about this and we need to tell them why. And we don't only tell them why once a year, we tell them about the additional classes a couple of times during the year through recommendation. And that's really about picking up the phone. This is a bonus tip. Picking up the phone, calling an age group, pick an age group during the month of let's say October and you pick the sixes. You wanna go through your list of all of your sixes that you have, you want to be calling the parents and saying, hey, I know little Susie, because you know, she does all the classes. We know little Susie is enrolled in our ballet. I was talking to the teacher and Miss Jenny said that we would really love her to improve her technique. Her te technique is a little lacking, um, but the good news for you is that there's a ballet class directly after that jazz class. We would love to get little Susie into that class. Why doesn't she come and trial it for the next two weeks on us? as a gift, bring her along for the next two weeks and let's see how she goes. And if her technique picks up a little bit, right? Then you have the process of in enrolling her into that second class. That's a process that should happen a couple of times a year. Pick one age group every month that you focus on, get them enrolled in more classes. That's gonna increase your profitability. Back to this, create the master sheet. Create a schedule design to be sent out in the mail or email. Now, some of you are like, what, mail? Aren't you like the digital guy that like everything is emailed and everything's Facebook ads and all those things? Yes, but there's something also about getting a packet in the mail. Do you remember the days where you used to hate going to the mailbox and you got excited about email? Do you remember those days, AOL, you've got mail. You've got mail, you're like, wow, my goodness, someone sent me an email. And now you're like, not another email. <laughs> And then you go to the letterbox and you're like, I got a package, oh my goodness. Where you used to be like, no, I don't want the mail. I hate checking the mail. So the mail is actually a really effective place for you to get communication to your customers. It's expensive to send mail. But some people have done this and it works really well. They get lumpy mail. It has a schedule and a welcome letter. And I'm gonna go through in a second all the things you can put in there but it's another opportunity to get in front of the customer. So mail, email, either or uh, can be really effective. Get materials printed if you are posting it and then email it or send it out with your re-enrollment information so that they can get started. Guys, you need to make this process simple. If your re-enrollment process includes them having to click through an online system that makes them fill out eight pages of information, they're not gonna do it. I know, like I see one page of information, I'm like, ugh, I don't have time for that. Do you, does anyone here have time to fill out eight pages of information? No, so we don't want our customers to feel like that either. A great way to get enrollments done is if you're on the phone with someone, you do it for them on the phone, right? Not, I'll send you a link. So you can spend the next four days filling out the paperwork. No, we don't want to do that. So the next piece is the welcome letter. Again, emailed or mailed. What do we want to put in the welcome letter? Well, we want to wrap up the year. We don't do a really great job of celebrating. I want to make sure that you get do a better job of celebrating the year that you had. Why do you think this is a good idea? Why should we kind of wrap up the year and tell them about all the good things that happened? Right, because they're gonna be like, oh, I wanna come back. I need to come back. That, that's right, that was such a great year. That was such an awesome year. So you wanna do that. Remind customers why they come to your studio. What's included in the pack. Make sure you include the re-enrollment details and deadlines and what they can look forward to in the new season. This is important. You've gotta get them excited. You got them excited about the year that they just had. You got to get them excited about what's to come. What's the next thing that is going to get them excited about re-enrolling with you? Okay, that's week number three. Week number two. You will notice here there is a theme. And the theme is all about following up. When did we last talk about follow up? In what process? That's correct, that one person that said the enrollment process. Yes, the enrollment process is when we talked about following up. So Monday, send the email with the enrollment pack information if you didn't already 
get a response from them. Wednesday, a video message from you. Did you get that? A video message from you, the owner, answering any questions that might have come up. Now guys, this isn't an individual email to everyone, uh, individual video to everyone. This is just one email with one video that says, hey there, uh, it's Mr. Clint here. So excited to be chatting with you today about coming back and joining us at Jenny's Jazz Hands Dance Academy. Uh, can't wait to see you. I sent you an email last week about information on how you can get re-registered to secure your place in the classes for your little one. Now, I have had some questions, so let me answer some questions that have come up since I sent out that information. I don't know what the questions are gonna be. You'll get the questions, you'll answer those questions and get them excited by wrapping up by saying, hey, it's gonna be an awesome season at Jenny's Jazz Hands Dance Academy. Uh, I can't wait to see you. If you do have any questions, uh, send me a text on this number, not your personal phone number, by the way, or send me through an email. Give us a call at the studio. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. But don't forget, we do have an incentive to enroll in next season. Make sure you get in your enrollment form by this date, by this time, to get the incentive. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. That's a video that you want to do. Friday. We ready to be following up. Friday, we want to send them a voicemail message. Now, a, sending a voicemail message means you don't have to call them and talk to them. Isn't that fun? So you don't have to deal with any of those questions. You just get a voicemail recorded. You can use voice shot. There's a whole bunch of tools out there now that does this. It sends, some of you might have got the voicemail message around like this event when you bought your tickets in November or something, maybe about the venue change. If we had your cell number, you would have got a voicemail message about that. And I didn't have to talk to any of you, although I love talking to you. I didn't have to talk to all 300 of you. And so this is a great tool you can use where you just send a voicemail message to their phone. Again, letting them know the reminder, the re-enrollment process is ending. The incentive is ending. Are they coming back? Week number one, one week out of your 21 days, Monday, call everybody that hasn't enrolled. And when I say you, I mean not you, I mean someone else, someone from your team. If it's only you, well then yes, you are calling everyone, right? Get someone from your team to get on the phone and follow up with everyone. Did they receive the packet is the first question. Do they have any questions? Are they coming back for the new season? Guys, that question is, is important. Don't, don't beat around the bush. Are you coming back next season? So do you wanna maybe, no. Are you coming back next season? Do we need to continue holding your place? Or have you found something else that won't be as valuable to your child as dance? <laughs> Would you like to be responsible for growing a bad behaved child because you have left our dance studio. I mean, I probably wouldn't say that. Don't go there. But you need to ask the question, are you coming back? Should we secure your place? Or can we release that so someone else can take that spot that really wants it? And you're saying that from an absolute, honest, authentic place. You want to know, you want to give them the opportunity first before you give that place to somebody else. Tuesday, SMS. Wednesday, last chance email. Thursday, another voicemail and an SMS. Friday, last chance email. You're like, whoa. You're like badgering these people. No. What did I tell you on day number one? Be persistent totally, but also you are robbing. If you are not following up, you are robbing the child of having an amazing experience at your studio that would be responsible for building an amazing human being. So every time someone complains to you or your office manager rolls your eyes because you're like, did you send that text message today? And they're like, oh. Did you send that email the next day? Did you follow up with them with a phone call the next day? But guys, I reckon 21 days of doing this, if you get an extra 20, 30, 40, 50, 80% of your students back, I think this process is worth it. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah, totally. Or if you just do one thing, you can do this. If you don't follow that, because I know people like easy options, right? I'm not going to let you take a photo. No, I am. 
Uh, please take a photo. If you only do one thing, do this. Student from last season, okay? This is students from last season. In the subject line, just put their first name. The first name of the student, Susie. In the email, no hello, no to, no dear, no fluff. Are you planning on coming back to dance in September? Question mark. That's it. To the, or to the parent, are you planning on bringing back Susie, uh, bringing Susie back to dance in September? Question mark. No love, Miss Susie. No, no love hearts, no kisses, nothing. That's it in the email. You can also send that uh, via text. You can also send that via text. Some of you are like, that's it? Yeah, that's it. Or the other one to your entire database that aren't dancing with you, uh, are you still interested in dance classes for your child? So you know how you've had all these people that have inquired with you over the last some 37 years, uh, however long you've been running your studio? This is a really effective email to get a response. Are you still interested in dance classes for your child? And they'll write back, oh, no, sorry, we've moved. Or, oh, actually, yeah, we are looking for dance again. Guys, be prepared to get a whole bunch of responses to this email, a huge amount. So if you want to test this before you do my 21-day process that I just mapped out for you, I'm going to be okay with that because I know that you're going to get a huge result from this. I would probably do this email or text message tomorrow while you start preparing for your 21-day follow-up. Megan, I think I've got your example when I taught this in the inner circle, maybe, originally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 30 people responded uh, of my 60, so easy yet so effective. That was within two hours when you sent that email, right? It's effective because it's easy for people to respond to. It's kind of personal. I mean, it doesn't say, dear so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. It's short and sweet but make sure you're on the email and on the text to have a conversation with them. So they say, oh yeah, we are coming back. I just thought I could just come on the first day. Yeah, and you're like, oh. And then you can call them, say, hey, I'm gonna give you a quick call. Or hey, give me a quick call on this number and re-register them on the phone. You don't wanna then send them a link and then wait and play ping pong. You want them to take action really, really quickly. Do we like this email? Guys, guys, I know it's day three. I know it's day three. If I'm bringing the energy, you got to bring the energy. Okay, you can all stay. You can all stay. A couple of things that you can do during this time to keep people engaged. Because, guys, if you're re-enrolling them in April, you do recital and whatever, and then you leave them alone until September, there's some danger zones in there where they might pull out of their registration. So make sure you are communicating with them during summer. You gotta make sure that they turn up. A great idea that we had, I think it was from one of our Australian Inner Circle members, was they send a postcard at their mascot. They have like a bear mascot for their preschool age group where the bear is on the beach. And it's like saying hello from the beach during the summer holidays. Summer holidays in Australia is December, January. Um, and so I really loved that idea. I thought that was super cute. And then like Susie gets a postcard from the mascot, right, from the bear. I think that's super cute. Uh, by the way, you can email that postcard, but that's not overly effective. They like to get stuff in the mail. I think that's the best way to do that. Two weeks before dancing starts, send a video from all your teachers getting them pumped up. Get your teacher to pull out their iPhone, record like a 30 second video, which is, hey, it's Mr. Clint. Hey guys, so excited to be back at dancing at Jenny's Jazz Hands Dance Academy. Can't wait to see you. First week in classes, I've got a killer combination to J-Lo. Let's get loud. You are gonna love it. <laughs> you are going to love it. I might do that later for you. Uh, one week before dancing starts, send a video from you getting them excited about the new season. So one is coming from teachers, one is coming from you. This can go out to everyone, people that are coming back and also people that haven't re-registered after you've gone through that process. 
A great reason to send it to everyone is because you'll kind of get everyone excited. Some people will be like, yeah, I need to enroll now. I'm so excited. Other people will be like, yeah, I've already re-enrolled, but I'm just so excited to come back to dancing. Get them pumped up. Get them excited to come, right? It's like, what do we do with domination? Follow what I do, guys. We opened a Facebook group leading up to the event where I was doing lives and posting things in there every day and getting you to do gifts and all that fun stuff. What was I achieving during that time? Community, engagement. I wanted you to get excited for the event, right? I do stuff and then I teach you, you guys how to do it for your studio, right? Still, it, it works. Let's keep moving. Uh, I've already talked about this. Make sure that you are not forgetting about those people once they re-register. They still need to hear from you and technology allows us to do that super, super easily. Um, Heather, going back to Heather again, when she implemented this process 94% the first time that she did it. And so as you look at that 21 day process and go Clint, you've given me about five years worth of work in the last two and a half days. <laughs> maybe, maybe like four years in the last two and a half days. Now you want me to do this. We're gonna talk a little bit later about the priorities that you need to focus on on the next 30 days. And maybe one of those priorities is gonna be this 21 day plan. Or it might be tonight. I wanna give you a challenge, actually. Who's like gonna go crazy tonight because you've been stuck in here for three days? Anyone? Anyone gonna go wild? No, you're not, Kimberly. I'm seeing you tomorrow at the retreat. <laughs> uh, Everyone from, who's not coming to our Inner Circle Retreat tomorrow, you guys can go wild. Everyone else, you're still not on vacation. Uh, and so what I would love you to do is take this challenge. That email that I just gave you basically has like nine or 10 words in it. Run your report through Jackrabbit or whatever you're using. Get those students that haven't re-registered and send that email tonight. Then I would love you to send me a message personally. I'm not gonna give you my cell number but send me a message on Facebook through Facebook Messenger in a couple of days and tell me your result and thank me for changing your life. <laughs> okay, who never wants to lose a student again? <laughs> well, I can't guarantee that. I can't guarantee it, but we are going to try and make that happen. Retention doesn't happen when you send a re-enrollment email. Retention happens. How many days a year should we be focusing on retention? I think someone said 364. What are you doing the other day? <laughs> Christmas. You want to take Christmas off. Okay, cool. I'll give you that. I'll give you, I'll give you Christmas off. I'm feeling kind. I'm feeling kind. Uh, the onboarding process. I mentioned this yesterday. Onboarding is crucial. We work so hard on getting a new student into our studio and we throw them into class and we say, good luck. No, we can't do that anymore. We need to make sure that we have crafted a six week process once they're enrolled to ensure that they quickly become part of the family and that they know, like, and trust us quickly so that they don't leave. This is getting more important because kids come and the parent doesn't say, well, you got to commit to this. I remember my mum was like, you got to keep doing T-ball, Clint. Because I was doing, do you guys do T-ball? Yeah. yeah, good. You know, you never know. I was doing T-ball and then I started dance class. And I wanted to do more dance classes and no T-ball. And my mum was like, Clint, you can't do more dance classes until you finish the season of T-ball. And we had like nine months left. And I was distraught because I couldn't do tap. And I was only doing jazz. And then as soon as I quit T-ball, I was into tap, and then I started ballet. I know. Uh, but I feel like maybe people don't do that anymore. I feel like the kid's like, oh, I didn't want to do that. And they're like, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you had a bad day. OK, let's go and do something else. And so this is why a six-week onboarding process is really important, because it gets them into our environment really quickly. It gets them building that loyalty, that family feel, so that it is so much harder for them to pull them out of enrollment. So let's have a look. Week number one, 
in our enrollment process. We want to do a video message. This comes from you and it tells them that they're not alone. Because what happens generally in the first class of dance? Is every sh new student coming into that class and like nailing it? Are they like, yeah, everyone's my best friend. I got the choreography. I love the teacher. I'm like the best in the class. No. They're like, I don't know every, anybody. Everyone feel, it feels like everyone's in their own groups, their own cliques. I can't pick up the choreography, right? So they're going through these things. And so when we think about it, we've got to address those things up front, right? Because the parent thinks it's their child, but no, every child is feeling the same way when they join their studio. So you want to have a video after they've done their first week, which is, hey, Mr. Clean here, thank you so much for joining us for your first week of dance. I'm so glad you're here. Now, I want to let you know that about 92% of our students that join us in the first week feel a couple of things. Some people say that they feel like they don't have any friends in the class. Some of our students say that they can't pick up the choreography, that they're not as flexible as the other students, uh, that they don't have the amount of friends that the other students, that they don't know anyone in the class. And I wanna let you know as a parent, it's probably worrying, but I wanna let you know that this is completely normal. And this actually happens for about the first four weeks of a dance class. And then week five and week six and week seven, see how your child will transform. Because what we do here at Jenny's Jazz Hands Dance Academy is we focus on talk about your core values, talk about your vision, talk about your mission, talk about your teachers. And so you'll notice a, a real difference in your child. Their confidence is going to go up. Da, 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 da. Call it out, don't hide from it. Do not hide from it. I generally do one video to start with that gets sent to everyone, but I do eventually like to do a tailored video for your preschool group because they are very different, right? And that mother, when you record a video for the preschool group, it could be, hey, I hope you had an amazing first week at our studio. It might not have been an amazing first class. It's always really tricky for our little ones to uh, say goodbye to mummy or daddy at the door if you're not doing uh, kind of mummy and me classes, uh, to leave the door. They generally will walk out of class or start crying maybe 10 times in their first class. That's okay. And they may lick the mirrors. That's also okay. And we won't charge you more for that, right? Put a joke in there. But what I want to let you know is about the journey that your child is going to go on and you talk about that journey. Guys, call it out. Don't try and hide the fact that the kid's probably gonna be a nightmare for the first two months. Let them know that because they think it's not normal. They're like, it's only my kid that's doing that so dance isn't right for them. Or my favorite, they're just too young. <laughs> oh, they're too young to be in dance. No, they're, they're, they're fine. This is how all the kids act at two and a half. So let them know that that's okay and that's expected and that what that's what happens. But talk to them about the journey that the child is going to go on. Send them something in the mail, please, that first week. A postcard, a welcome to our family card in the mail that some of you have signed that has like a photo of all of you on the front cover of the, of the card. This is a really lovely piece for them to get in the mail and go, ah, oh, this is nice. I'm, we feel like a real person here. We don't feel like a number. And that's what I want all of your students to be saying. Even though you're using technology and automation in your studio, there needs to be a personal touch. Week number two is an email that you're gonna send with your story. They need to know who you are and why you do what you do. You don't need to be at the classes. You don't need to be at the studio every day. But what did I say yesterday and the day before? I said a line that was, someone said it, someone said it, say louder. People by people. People by people. So you don't need to be in the classroom. You don't need to be teaching the classes. You don't need to be at the office. But they still need to understand you, your vision, and your values. So share that with them in an email through a letter. Week number three is a text message or a phone call checking in. Hey there, just wanna check in. How's everything going at the studio? We love you being here. Nice and easy. Great opportunity for them to give you some feedback. This is also a good opportunity for you to catch them 
if they're about to fall. Week three is a good time because they've built some rhythm. They've built some stability. They've learned the things that they like and they've learned the things that they don't like at this point. So it's nice to check in with them, see how they're doing. Week number four, share the love. This is a great opportunity for you to talk about the friendships and bonds that happen through dance. Does anyone have friends from their days of dancing still in the room? Look, so many of you, I do, who I started the business with. She texted me last night and said, I just watched your book launch video. I'm so proud of you. I miss you. That's the girl that I started my dance studio lit with. I left the partnership and we've stayed friends ever since. That was dance. We went to dance. We did dance class together. I mean, it builds the most beautiful relationships. I would love you to tell a story in this email about the beautiful relationships that maybe you have built or you've seen built inside of the studio. And part of this email is a really soft sell about referrals. Okay. So what you want to say is, hey, if your little one or little Susie has any friends that you think would be perfect for our studio, we would love to welcome them with welcome arms, with open arms. Uh, and if they do decide to join, then you talk about your referral program. This is a slight sell. This is not a fitness model when you sign up and they're like, hey, have you got five friends I can call and harass for the next three years? <laughs> no, it's not that. This is telling a beautiful story of friendship that is true and authentic and it's offering them, hey, do you know anyone else that might like to be a part of this family and share the same type of experience that you are? Nice, slight, easy, easy. Week number five is an auto, audio message. Can you see like we're touching on every medium here? Written, video, audio, texting. And so an audio message, you can use something like Voxer, for instance, to record an audio message. This goes out to everyone. And it's getting them excited for the following month. This is the only piece of the onboarding process you need to switch out once a month. This can be set up in an automated email sequence. The only thing you need to change is the link to the audio message because you will change this message every month. What does this do? This builds anticipation for the next month to get them excited about what is happening inside of the studio. And week number six is a video message. And the video message is kind of recapping the last six weeks. Hey, it's been so awesome to have you here for the last six weeks. I'm excited for us to continue this journey. I'm sure you've noticed a couple of things have shifted in your child uh, over the last six weeks. <laughs> Probably a boost in confidence. And you go through those qualities that you instill in your children right, in your students at your studio. Because they probably recognize it, but you really need to tell them what has happened over these last six weeks. Because they might not be thinking, oh, my child's more confident. But you'll say it and they'll go, oh yeah, he, she is more confident. They'll recognize it because you're bringing it up. It is important that you kind of tie a bow around these six weeks. Who is currently following this six week, some of you are laughing already. Who is currently following this six week onboarding process? Look at the hands, friends. Who is going to implement the six week onboarding process? Amazing, great. This is super valuable. And once you've done it, and guys, this is work. This would be one of your goals in your 90 day plan, okay? One of your goals in your 90 day plan can be this, but this is really effective. Our uh, Cheryl, Sarah, Inner Circle members, some amazing Canadians, 87% retention on their preschool classes when they implemented this. And preschool classes are hard to get from year to year, right? So this was a really, really amazing result. So I want to prove to you that it works, that I haven't just made this stuff up, right? It actually works. So think now, what are the two areas that you need to focus on when it comes to retention and onboarding. Look at your notes that you've just taken. What have been those standout moments? What are those two things that you need to focus on when it comes to onboarding and retention? Who wants to share? The friend is back, the catch box is here. Who wants to share? 
Thank you. Um, oh, you reckon? OK. Uh, how did I do this last time? Oh, no, that seems, that seems aggressive. <laughs> David. Oh, have we got the catch box on, Chin? Yes. Nearly. Now? Yes. So, OK, there we go. Um, so uh, when you were talking about like when people who re-enroll or people who are currently enrolled, like keeping in touch with them over the summer, like I feel like sort of I'm sort of maybe more like you, like I like to do my own thing, and, like not like reach out. Don't use me as an excuse. Yeah, it's like all the <laughs> you know, like he, um, no. So like I think that that's something that really that definitely needs to improve, like reaching out to people during the summer, maybe even having some time where they can come in a special event or something like that. And reaching out not just to people who who, um, who haven't enrolled yet, but also people who have re-enrolled. You know, not taking that for granted. I think that's really important. Yeah, that's awesome. Who else wants to share around here? Yes. <laughs> oh come on, David. That was so close. <laughs> I couldn't see it was a blind catch. Okay. Um, I think I don't know. I feel like um, myself as leading my staff and like kind of. Staff Maybe I can say it's like Canadian way because it's always like, I'm sorry, we're calling, but like we just want to see, like I'm sorry, you know, and just like just going strong with the incentives and like, you know, get, giving them a deadline and just being more like, you know, gung ho when we do those follow up calls to actually like lock that down because we're just so like, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, actually, yeah, totally, totally you should be saying to them, hey, what's going on? Yeah. Are you coming back or not? I'm yeah. sorry because I'm going to give away your spot. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's come over here, Sarah. Oh, no. oh, I don't know. Sarah, maybe stand up. <laughs> we are pros at the catch box. Three days and we are onto it. Um, I have an onboarding system, but I primarily use email for all of like the six week system. So I need to work on reaching out through different mediums and different ways. And I think I need to research better ways to be able to do, to send video and audio messages. So if anyone's already doing it, doing it well, let me know what you use. <laughs> awesome, that's great. Yeah, the technology. <laughs> you can really get caught up. I know, because I need two microphones, because my voice isn't loud enough. Uh, the technology piece can be a sticking point. And so I do not want you to use that as an excuse. Someone asked me during lunch, so Clint, tell me about all the technology that I need for the enrollment process. And I said, have you done the manual version? They're like, no. And I was like, do the manual version for three months. You need to be able to execute on the process before you automate the process. Really important. So don't go in going, I'm going to automate my whole business. No, you can't do that. I'm sorry. Not up front. Do the manual process first so you get the process, then you understand the process, and then you can understand what needs to be automated or what can be automated in the process. Are we excited about retention? Yes. Look at that energy. Why are we excited? Because we want to go somewhere. Where do we want to go? We want to become the... The go-to studio. That is right. We want to become the go-to studio in our area. We've spent so much time over these last three days. We've completed the growth pillar, by the way. Right? Let's give ourselves a round of applause. <laughs> is the growth pillar what you really need right now? So many of you have been coming up, and majority, to be honest, majority of the questions that I've had have been around the growth pillar. Student attraction, enrollment, retention. And I think a reason why it is popular is because you know that that's where your focus should be if you do want to grow your studio, right? If you want more students doing more classes and you want to keep them for longer, that's where your focus needs to be. And so this is growth, right, in another model where we break it down. And so we have growth in the middle. What's up the top? It is to your left is and then over here is retention. So when we look at the attraction piece, when we can attract students into our studio 
and we can retain our customers, what do we get? Oh my goodness, you guys are amazing. Yes, <laughs> lifetime students. That's over here. When we attract students and we enroll them, we get? Full Who wants full classes in here? Yes, let's get some full classes. When we have our enrollment process and retention, because we, keep, we get them and then we keep them, we make? Any, anyone interested? Again, anyone interested in this piece? Woo, Bonnie, you're on fire this weekend. Yes, cool. So have you got your marketing scorecard? You're like, I don't want to look at that one. <laughs> Who does not want to look at this scorecard again? Anyone in the room? The marketing scorecard out of 28. Yes, good Mary. Because when we did the sample of the room, guys, what I noticed was this one was pretty low. This one wasn't amazing. And then yesterday afternoon, as I was answering questions around evergreen funnels, and Tracy was like, Clint, I've talked to so many people about Facebook ads, like everyone. When she got off stage, she was like, oh, you know, that's not a very interesting topic, I don't feel like. And I was like, Tracy, they like loved every second of that. I like, these guys are committed to growth. They are committed to grow their studio, and they want to do that through the medium that works, which is Facebook advertising. That's the way that you do it. And so one of those questions on here was about your Facebook advertising, right? And there was not a lot of hands that went up for number two on that one. So have a look at your scorecard and just have another see through of the things that you could improve on when it comes to the growth pillar of the studio. Because we need to get kind of deeper into our goal setting around this. So when you think of the growth pillar, there's a couple of core goals that we need to set. Do we want to set some goals around growth? Anyone? Yeah. Yes, let's do it. So let me know, how many new student leads per week do you want to be generating in your studio? So how many inquiries do you want to be getting inside of your studio when you start this new season? Write that number down. How many new inquiries do you want to be getting? Because guys, it needs to start with inquiries. Yes, we can have how many new students we want, but we've got to start with at the inquiry level. Who wants to yell out some of these numbers? How many inquiries? 60, 10, 50, 100, who said that? Who said that? Yes, Valerie, good, yes. 20, great. 25, I feel like I'm at an auction. Okay, you guys are sorted. You don't want any new students. Is it 20, okay, awesome, right? What about new student trials per week? How many trials? So if you just said to me you want 100 new inquiries every week, how many of those 100 do you want to turn into trials? Oh, all of them. Right, uh, yeah, but they probably won't. Right, so yeah, of course I want all of them. Yeah, but people inquire and then they don't turn up. Yeah, 50%, I mean, that's low-ish. I would love it to be up around 70, 80 and higher. Like I think 80 kind of would be my goal. Because guys, if you were doing a campaign when you're generating 100 inquiries a week, uh, you're doing a Facebook ad campaign. That is the only thing that you would get 100 inquiries a week with. And so you were generating those inquiries. The quality of those inquiries aren't like someone going through your website, typing in their email address and actively inquiring. Okay, so that conversion rate is gonna be a little bit lower. So 50 is like average, then we kind of go up from there. So think about that. Then how many new students per week? So we are breaking down this bigger goal that we set earlier, right? Which was now, three months, six months, 12 months. Now we're getting down into weekly because those big goals that I gave you, you got to break them down into weekly. Okay, so that's what we're doing with this pillar. Students retain per month. Who's measuring their retention rate every single month? Hands up. Great. That's the least amount that we want to be measuring our retention rate. Ideally, we're measuring it every week or every couple of weeks, no more, no, uh, not beyond once a month. Definitely once a month we need to be checking our churn, right? So what do you want that result to be? What about your class capacity? We talked about this, 
but what should your class capacities be at at a weekly stage? Where do you want your numbers to be there? Going up every week, staying steady, slightly going up. You need to keep your finger on the pulse when it comes to your class capacity. Most softwares now do this for you. Average classes per student. You should know this number off the top of your head. I know Ryan in Sydney is like, he's like 4.6. I'm like, how do you get that number? Like 4.6, he is so clear on the number of how many classes his, an average student does at his studio. What does that number look like for you? Average dollar amount per student, do you know this? Who honestly knows this amount? The dollar amount per student. Look around at the hands. We want that, those hands, more hands up, right? Next time, more hands up. And then total students and places for your season of 1920. So all of you should be measuring the amount of students you have. All of you should be measuring the amount of places you have filled and the amount of places you have available. So little Susie, she is one student. Susie does three classes a week. She's taking up how many spaces, places? Three, three places. You need to know student numbers and you need to know places. Does this make sense? Yes. Are you like, oh my goodness, there's like a weekly process as well that I need to do? Yes, because if you don't have a plan, you won't be able to achieve the goals that you are going after. Everything needs to be breaking down, broken down. When I spoke to you earlier, I said every goal needs a project plan. Correct, a project plan where every single step is detailed in that. So how, how are you going to get there? When you set these big goals, someone said 100 inquiries a week, right? How are you actually going to get that result? How are you going to get 100 inquiries a week, right? How will you achieve that? Who remembers this from yesterday? Anyone remember this line? Yes and our three-year journey that we're going to take. Because where are we right now? We're over here, right? We are at where? Today. We're at today. And there's a couple of opportunities. There's a couple of journeys, a couple of pathways that we can take. I think we all agreed yesterday we want to be on the green line, right? Hands up again, just remind me, who wants to be on the green line? Keep them up. Oh, what about you guys? You don't want to be on the green line? Yeah, yeah, put, it, put your hand up, good. <laughs> You're writing notes, I forgive you. If you, are, if you are on your phone, I'd kick you out. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. We wanna be up here, right? We wanna be on the green line. We wanna be ideal, because what's our other option? We could be just okay. Who loves being okay? Who wakes up in the morning and goes, I'm okay? <laughs> I don't know what that was, but uh, <laughs> it's a new dance move they're bringing out called the Salter Slam. What about this one? Who wants to be poor? The color is like poo poor. No one wants to be there. And our least favorite place. Anyone want to be on line number four on the red line here in the audience? No, because we remember we're here today, right? How many decisions are we away from jumping lines today? One, one decision. Gets a little bit harder when we're here. That's not one decision, that's like a year of decisions. Here, whoa, that's a big gap. We don't wanna be here either. This doesn't just relate to our journey over the three years in our studio, this relates to all of the pillars as well. Every single pillar that we've talked about, our growth pillar, our freedom pillar, our empire pillar. And so a goal, without a plan is just a dream. dream. And so we've been getting so many questions around student attraction, retention, and enrollment. So many questions. And uh, I was talking to Tracy, and earlier this year in January, Tracy and I ran a program together. It was called the Student Attraction Intensive. Who did that program? There's some of you in the room. Yeah, awesome. Student Attraction Intensive, and this program is only about the growth pillar inside of your studio. 
And so I'd love to talk to you a little bit about that program because Tracy's like, Clint, I've got all these business cards from people who want help with Facebook ads and want to learn how to get them right and how to do them and the student attraction piece. And I was like, let's, let's do it again because that 12 weeks was really, really fun that we spent together coaching a small group of studio owners around this pillar of growth in the studio. So the Student Attraction Intensive is an online coaching program led by Tracy and myself on the growth pillar of your studio, which is student attraction, enrollment, and retention. So this 12-week program, it goes for three months, which also coincides with our 90-day goals, our 90-day goals. So inside this program, we have attraction, enrollment, and retention. Everything that you have learned here in this piece is the foundation. But here's the thing. You need to now go away and implement. Remember what Mike said yesterday about knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power, the implemented piece. And so what happens when you go home and try and do the 11-step enrollment process and you're like, what was that thing he said about that thing and that step? <laughs> right? Where do you go for the support? And so, well, you can come here and join us in this program. So let me tell you about how it works. Week number one is all about the customer journey. And this is the steps a customer takes to find out about you, to learn about you. We dive deeper into your ideal student, who your ideal student is, and we follow that process and we map out every single step as the customer goes through the process. Week number two is the enrollment process and we implement it in a week. We get the system in your studio within a week. I then give you our six week marketing campaign. So you know how I said there's like a 300 steps in a marketing campaign? I give you the marketing campaign that you can put into your Asana, we use Asana or Trello or into a spreadsheet. So you actually don't have to do that work to implement it. We then have an implementation week. So you get no content for a week. I run some coaching calls and we are just getting you to catch up on those first three weeks, right? We are getting the work done. Guys, this isn't watch 35 videos, good luck program. This is a coaching program. It's not an online program. It's a coaching program with Tracy and I by your side. Content calendar. Anyone get overwhelmed with social media? What to post where? I give you our monthly content calendar, which goes through and tells you the 60 things to post across the month, right? So you get that calendar step by step. In our next week, week six, and yes, this is a favorite week and I'm slightly jealous because this is Tracy's week. And in week number six, Tracy runs four live training calls on setting up your Facebook ads. Four calls in a week where she helps you get your campaign happening. And then afterwards, Tracy delivers a weekly coaching call on how to implement it, right? So not only do you just get the training live, or live, you also get her helping you implement it along the way. Brand, we've talked about building a brand and how important it is. We spend a whole week focused on your brand, getting clear on your messaging and how to move you forward. Week eight is about outside the box marketing ideas. We didn't get to touch on any of this during our three days together, but this process is about what else is there? Aside from Facebook ads, which we need to be good at, that can't be your only distribution channel. So where else can we focus? And we go deeply into those. We have another implementation week, so you can keep doing the work. Keep students all year round. I run uh, training around retention in week number 10. And this is all of the ideas, the 90 day calls, all of the things I lay out for you across the year that you can do to keep your students. Customer experience in week 11, I talked about, I'm gonna add in the Uber credit idea. I think that was a good one I came up with earlier. We talk about the customer experience and we spend a week mapping that out together. And our last week is another implementation week uh, as well as wrapping up our 12 weeks together. It's called an intensive, why? Because it is intense. intense. Yes, does it take a huge amount of time? No, you're not gonna be working 10, 20 hours a week on this, 
but it does require you to spend at least two hours a week attending the trainings, coming to the coaching calls, and then you're gonna need some time to implement as well. But now is the perfect time to get this sorted because you guys are about to go into a brand new season. So you need to make sure that you are getting this done. So how does it work? You get nine video trainings from me that I have created in the nine weeks of content. That's fan I think it's fantastic. Our members loved it who did it in January, but the real gold is in the actual coaching that we do with you. This isn't another online program. This is a coaching program with Tracy and myself. We have guides and templates and email templates. All of that stuff is included. A private community where I'm in there every day just with the intensive group. The intensive group is in there, Tracy and I are in there, and the coaching calls with me. Bonus, who's that lovely looking lady right there? What's her name? Tracy. Yes, Tracy Morgan, not from SNL, the real celebrity Tracy Morgan, who is the Facebook ads guru. She is joining us for the 12 weeks to give you the coaching you need around your ads. Tracy is amazing. Uh, she will be in there. She's great. She joins us all the time in the inner circle. She's in our app and members are posting their questions and she's like really laying out what you need to do. So if Facebook ads is a challenge for you, rather than go and spend, you know, 10 grand on getting someone implementing your different funnels for you, you can come along and learn through the course. The regular investment of the program is 4,000 up front or seven payments of 649. But because you guys are here, what do you reckon you get? A discount. <laughs> the things that I hate, I am giving to you. So it's $3,000 for paying full for the entire program, or you can pay $4.99 over seven months. Each month, $4.99. So you're saving $1,000 or $150 per month. Bonus, you get the recordings from the whole three-day event. We are not selling these recordings at all, the only people that are getting these recordings are Inner Circle members. That's it. If you're in the Inner Circle, guys, you get a recording uh, of, of domination. If you join us in SAI, we will also give you the recordings of the event. Now, if you're in the Inner Circle or you just join the Inner Circle, you get this for free. Uh, yeah, you get to join us in the intensive. You don't pay anything more. We're going to give you this for free. Existing Inner Circle members, you are joining us as well in the intensive as well. You don't need to pay any more. You also get all the recordings from the program. We start this program, because guys, it's live. We start this program on Monday the 12th of August is when we kick off the intensive, which is in two weeks. No, one week tomorrow. Yeah, I know. One week tomorrow, we kick off the Student Attraction Intensive. If you want to sign up for this, you need to fill out your form today, and you need to hand it to the team as you leave. Inner Circle members, you don't need to fill out the form because we give you access to this, okay? So if you're an Inner Circle member, old, not in age, but in the time that you've been with us, or new members that have just joined us, we'll get you all the access information around this. Um, but if you haven't signed up for the Inner Circle and you would love to be a part of this training, we would definitely love to have you, Tracy and myself, uh, to work with you for a 12-week intensive period to get the growth pillar sorted, right? To get your attraction sorted, your enrollment sorted, uh, and also your retention piece sorted in your studio. Sound good? Yes.